so welcome you all and uh, this is the second lecture of solid state physics so let's start with the topic uh, examples of examples of primitive vectors <clears throat> so let's consider the system shown here so these are the lattice points And uh, in between also we have uh, some lattice points like in this fashion. Okay, so <clears throat> we can uh, we have already studied that uh, we can uh, represent unit cells in two manners. Uh, let's let's uh, take one reference lattice point represented by this fashion so suppose this is the reference lattice point and uh, we are going to connect it it with the primitive vectors in this fashion so we are going to get uh, this as a unit cell Now <clears throat> let's consider uh, next two vectors like in this fashion. Suppose um, in this manner. So this is the lattice point and uh, if we are going to connect it with uh, the nearest neighbors um we can give it as this arrangement so we can say here that we are going to get more lattice points here here so basically this is a conventional conventional cell so what I'm trying to say is that uh, from this diagram um, it is observed that uh, it is observed that in case of that in case of unit cell in case of unit cell there is only one there is only one lattice point while in case of in case of conventional cell So conventional cell has more uh, lattice points. Has more lattice points.
in comparison to the unit cell in comparison to the unit cell so it should be noted that um, the size of conventional cell is greater than the size of unit cell so this is the main takeaway from this topic now let's move to the new topic that is called uh, beginner seed cell um, let me clear this thing first okay so let's start with the new topic that is um Wigner seed cell okay so how to construct the uh, fitness itself so let's uh, learn step by step first let me draw the lattice points suppose these are the lattice points Uh, I think I should make more big yeah. so these are the lattice points so first step so first step is to choose one reference point so suppose this is our reference point reference point now secondly we have to join that reference point with the nearest neighbors so the nearest neighbors we can observe is um <clears throat> first nearest neighbor second nearest neighbors third nearest neighbors and fourth nearest neighbors so we have to second step is to join that reference point with the nearest cells now we have to take a plane known as brackens and uh, bisect the joint lines first let's check the brackens so brack plane here mm, yeah brack planes so these are the brack planes now we have to bisect these brack planes so we can bisect the brack planes in this fashion So this is a bisecting line so the region enclosed here so this region is called so this enclosed region is called Wigner seed cell so this entire region enclosed here it's called Wigner Siege Cell. 
so we can say so we can say that uh, Wigner seeds cell is a region of a space is a region of a space close to the close to the lattice point so it is just translated around let me write so it is just translated around the points around the points and it's not constructed with the help of primitive vectors and it's not constructed with the help of primitive vectors <clears throat> so these are called um, so this is called this and uh, these planes are called Bragg planes okay now let's understand uh, the concept of the complex crystal so let me clear this thing first Okay, so let's understand um, the concept of complex crystal now. Complex crystal. So a complex crystal is obtained when we associate the more atoms with the unit cell. So suppose um, this is our this is our arrangement of uh, the complex crystals. So this is our uh, lattice points. So a complex crystal is obtained. Let me write. It is obtained when we associate when we associate the more items with the unit cell sorry Okay, so so these are the lattice, and uh, we are going to introduce bases. So in between lattice points, if we are introducing the bases, so it will result in the complex crystal systems. So let me introduce the bases. So basically, these are the bases. So the position of the basis is given by vectors. Um, um, we can 
take the vectors such as b1 vector and b2 vector so this one is first position of the first basis and this is the position of the second lattice basis that is b2 vector um, let me write the position of the basis is given by vectors such as b1 vector and b2 vector with the reference lattice points so this is the reference lattice point So, <clears throat> um, there is called uh, symmetry operation. Um, so we can say symmetry operation is the operation which leaves the crystal unchanged. Like um, lattice translation. Let's see what happens if you are doing the lattice translations. So this is the new uh, next topic. Um, let me clear this thing first. that is translation yeah so there are some symmetry operations which leaves the crystal unchanged like uh, the properties of the crystals doesn't change if we are going to perform that operations um we will study later uh, like on the next upcoming uh, um, lecture or in this lecture itself if you are finding the time so let's start with the lattice translation so lattice translation is represented by it is represented by this vector t n vector and dash vector here 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 yen dash yen dash is the new lattice point new lattice point and yen is the old lattice point So we can express this lattice translation in this form mm. n dash minus n vector in a1 primitive vector plus n2 dash minus n2 but multiplied by a2 vector plus n3 dash minus n3 multiplied by a3 vector so we can say that uh, all the Bravi vectors are translation vectors um let me write it to be more better for you <clears throat> Mm. 
all the Breve vectors or translational vectors all the Breve lattice are equivalent which means we observe the same moment at each lattice point um, nearest neighbors are at same distance Let me write all the brevis lattice. All the brevis lattice are equivalent, which means, which means we observe. the same environment we observe the same environment at each lattice at each lattice points that is nearest neighbors are at same distance nearest neighbors are at same distance so in complex crystal translation symmetry is due to Breve lattice not due to basis um, we can say that uh, any local property is periodic with translational symmetry for example charge density um, let me show you any local any local property is periodic is periodic with translation symmetry with translation symmetry For example, charge density. Charge density can be represented by a function of position. Um, let's say uh, we can represent it by dq by dv. So at distance, <clears throat> so suppose take any charge here and take one volume of the enclosed charge that is dv here so distance r we have the same value of the charge density so we can see so we can see uh, that uh, number of so this is the translation moment and this is the position initial position and this is the position added to the new old position so this is the uh, so the property of uh, charge density doesn't change if we are doing translation 
now let's uh, learn about um, some defects and uh, imperfections in crystals defects or imperfections so due to due to the presence of defects or imperfections in the real crystal the translational symmetry is broken so defects can be classified as point defects line defects and surface defects point defects can be vacancy mm, let me show you So here you can see that uh, there is a vacancy here. No terms are present here. So this is called vacancy defect, and uh, which occurs due to when atom is missing from its original site. And uh, this interstitial defect, this is uh, vacancy. Now, other defect is interstitial one. Interstitial overwork interstitial occurs when when Vedam when atom is exist out of planes that is here. Suppose uh, extra item is present here so this is called interstitial defect <laughs> now if uh, different size of atom is present like uh, suppose uh, atoms have one specific size and uh, one extra atom is present of different size so we can call it as a substitutional impurity so suppose um, there are atoms here these are of similar size and one extra atom is present here with more bigger size in comparison to the other items so we call this as a substitutional impurity substitutional defect now line defects occurs due to <clears throat> line defects Are occur due to dislocation and uh, surface defects surface defects so uh, in surface defects periodicity of atoms periodicity of atoms um, at surface is different at surface is different than the pres than the periodicity of atoms in bulk then the periodicity of atoms in bulk so <clears throat> now let's understand the term polycrystalline Mm, okay
so this is the last topic of our uh, this lecture in the next lecture we'll start with the topic point symmetry like we are going to see some symmetrical operations in a crystal <clears throat> so what is polycrystalline? So polycrystalline is a material which is made up of different crystal domain. Crystal domain means grains. Um, so let me write. Polycrystalline are the materials which are made up of different crystal domains. So how it looks like um okay So, so these are the crystal domains which we can call grains and uh, these green lines these green lines are called green boundaries Drain boundaries. So this is the basic representation of the polycrystalline material. I'm not going more deep because uh, not it's not more part of our course. So in the next lecture, we are going to study about uh, the point symmetry and uh, some topics like uh, classification of solid materials according to the bonding, binding energy, and uh, polarization vector. So for now. I'm going to close the recording and uh, thank you.